and let's answer this uh, trigonometric function equation that we've been given. So basically, we have uh, two sine cubed x minus sine x being equal to zero. So what are we supposed to do? So the fact that we have sine, sine is common. We can factorize it, right? So we have sine sine x is common and of course the first part we're going to remain with 2 sine squared why because we've removed 1 sine of x minus so sine x is removed so we remain with a 1 okay let me even just remove this here so the basic idea is after factorization if you have to multiply what is in the brackets with uh, what is outside, you're supposed to go back to the original what? The original equation. And that's basically what can happen in this case. Okay. So if the product of sine x with whatever is in the brackets is equal to 0, it's either sine x itself is equal to 0 or what is in the brackets is equal to 0. So those are the two possible ways that we can have this equation being equal to 0. So I'll start first of all by the first part. So sine x equated to 0. So we know the way a sine function moves. It's something that moves like this, right? Of course, we want to have our solutions between 0 and d, 2 pi regions. Pay attention to that. So that is 0. This is pi over 2, which is also 90. That is your pi. And then the last part is, of course, 2 pi. The middle part should be, um, that is like, should be 4 pi over of course it was 70 if you convert it to radians yeah so it should be 3 pi over 2 yeah now which part do we expect that the sine function is equal to 0 so it's at this point and also that point right so therefore the solutions to this first equation is we have 0 and then we also have pi which is 180 in degrees so these are the first two possible solutions that we have now we can also look at the other part. The other part tells us to say 2 sine squared x is equal to so the negative 1 I can move with the other side so it becomes a positive and then I'll divide by 2 on both ends so that we have 1 over 2 on the other side right something like that. Now at that point where we have 1 over 2 we can find the square root on both ends, right? So sine x is equal to the root of 1 over 2. So the other side where we had the squared, after the square root, they've, they've cancelled the square root. Of course, what you need to understand is sine squared x is the same as eh, sine x to the power 2. That's the understanding that you need to have there. Okay, at this point now, we know that if we are to distribute our square root, square root of 1 is just a 1, and then we remain with a root of 2 on the bottom. So, what value of x is able to give us that? So, you need to think smart. You need to know what we call the special angles. And if you don't know, check the video in the using the tag above. It will guide you on how you need to know the special angles. So... In this case, I already know that this is coming from a 45-45 triangle. Okay, so 45-45, that is my 90. So there is a 1, that's a 1, and then this is like root of 2. So which sign? Sine opposite should be able to, sine op sin theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So what angle can give me the opposite of a 1 and the hypotenuse of a root of 2? So obviously it's 45, right? Because if I use this angle, the opposite is 1, the square root, the hypotenuse is root of 2. So therefore it's sine of sine 45. So I'll start first of all with degrees in case you are not conversant with the radians. So my x is equal to 45. In which other quadrant do I expect sine to be positive? It's in the second quadrant. If you're also not so certain about this, you can also watch the same video using the tag. Or check in the description for the link to that video which will guide you now to work with the quadrants and also how to work with the special angles. So we are 45. 
So if I, I need to subtract from 180 for me to get the other angle. 180 minus 45. What answer do you expect there? If you subtract. So if we are saying 80 minus 45, that is a 7, that is 10, 5, 35. So basically we have 135. 135 degrees. So we need to convert our answers to radians because they want our answers to be between 0 and 2 pi radians. How do we do that? So it's a very, very simple step, but you need to take. All you just have to do is uh, multiply that by pi over 180 degrees. Okay. So you want to find the common factor between 180 and 45. In this case, we're trying to assume calculators are not allowed. So what do you do? I, I, I can at least tell to say all these are going to be divisible by a 5. Fair enough. So... 45 divided by 5, that is going to be like, in 40, it's 8 times, so that's like 9 times. Because 9 times 5 is 45. And then, 9 in 100, it's like 20 times. And then in 80, it's like uh, 18 times, right? In 80, it's like 16 times. So we have 16 times plus 20 times. Obviously, you'd expect to have a 36. So if you try multiplying 36 by 5, you should be able to get 180 there. Do we have any common factors between 9 and 36? 9 can be divided into 36 how many times? 4 times. So that is like 1, and then it's like 4. So we have pi over 4. Radians. So pi over 4. Of course, we know that in that case, if we want to go back to degrees, just get 180 divided by 445. So pi over 4 basically is equal to 45. We can now use the other one to convert. So 135, all the same, divided by 180 there. What answer do we expect to have in such a case? So we can start by a 5 as well. 135 divided by 5, that is 27. Because we know in 13 is 2 times, we have a remainder of uh, 3. And then in 235, it is 7 times. In, two one, in 218, that is like 3 times. And then a remainder of 3, that is 6. So we have 27 over 36. Do we have any common factors between 27 and 36? 9 into 27 should 3 times, right? And then 9 into 36 is how many times? Mm, 4 times. So we have 3 pi over 4, right? So now grouping all these solutions, you have your answers. These are the four possible solutions that are between 0 and 2 pi that are able to make that equation be equivalent to a 0. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. So if you want to access more videos like this one in mathematics, 1120, kindly register to have access to all videos from all the topics covered, that is from set theory all the way up to calculus. And then you can also have access to all the tutorial solutions that have been covered in math, of course, in video forms. And of course, past paper revisions to commence very soon, just before your exams. So if you want to prepare for exams, register at on Android Quacha until you write your exams and you have access to the best two ways known to prepare for the exam. The best way in, in university by using past papers as well as the tutorials. So thank you very much for watching.